Okay, and uh, with the last talk, we're going to, to see how to wean ourselves off uh, in predictivity yeah, for spectral locales. Thank you. So I'll be talking about some work we have done with my supervisor, Martin Escar Escardo, on constructing the patch locale of a spectral locale in univalent type theory. Um, and for that, I need, to for I need to start by telling you what a locale is. So, oh, okay. So a locale is a notion of space characterized by um, its frame of opens. So in point set topology, we have the, pr the frame of opens of some space, but in, in locale theory, we take this, this frame of opens as an abstract lattice, and we, we characterize the space based on the basis of this lattice alone. So uh, instead of defining it as a, as a lattice of subsets of some set of points. And there are two kinds of important locales that, one, that we are interested in. And uh, the first one is a spectral locale, which is a locale in which the compact opens form a basis closed under finite meets. And the other is a stone locale, which is a compact locale in which the clopens form a basis. And the latter is a special case of the former, since every stone, is, every stone locale is spectral, since the clopens coincide with the compact opens in stone locales. And the idea of the patch construction is that it, it takes us exactly in the opposite track, opposite direction. So it takes a spectral locale and it transforms the spectral locale into a stone one. And it, it is the universal such transformation. Uh, and the picture of what I just described is, is this. So stone locales form a full subcategory of the category of spectral locales. And um, <coughs> this is a core reflective subcategory and the core reflector is the patch construction. It exhibits the category of stone locales as a core reflective subcategory of the category of spectral locales. And uh, the patch topology is sometimes called uh, a topology of positive and negative information, especially uh, when one adopts the computational view of topology. So let me give some examples that illustrate this. So if we take the, the Sierpinski space, for example, which is, the, which is like a space of, tr space of truth values for experiments whose positive outcomes are detectable, whereas, whereas their negative outcomes might not be detectable. And if we take the patch of Sierpinski, we get the booleans where both positive outcomes and the negative outcomes de are detectable. So this is one example of the sense of uh, sense in which patch is a topology of positive and negative information. And there are many more interesting examples, but unfortunately, I don't have the time. Uh, I don't have time to spend uh, too much time on this. Okay, so uh, the goal in our work has been to implement patch in univalent type theory predicatively, that is, without using propositional resizing axioms, which have no known computational interpretation at the moment. And to define the notion of a locale in type theory, we define a frame. Uh, and this notation we use here, fem sub w a, is um, the, the, type of, uh, the type of families over some type a whose index sets live in universe w. Uh, and a frame is a, is a lattice with finite meets, arbitrary joins, and in which the finite meets distribute over the arbitrary joins. But in type theory, we need to be a bit careful about the universes, so we parameterize our, our notion of a frame by three universes, u, v, and w, u for the carrier set, v for the truth value of the partial order, and w for the index types, uh, index types of families over which the joins are, are defined. And uh, let me also briefly explain some notation that I will be using. So uh, frames, the category of frames and frame homomorphism is called FRM and locales are objects of the opposite category. And because we pretend that locales were spaces, we uh, call the morphisms of this category continuous maps and we use naming conventions for topological spaces for them. So capital letters for their elements and letters X, I, X Y, Z for them. And um, this is the convention from sketches of an elephant by Johnston. Um, and in our work, we use a slick definition of patch as the frame of Scott continuous nuclei on a given frame. So a nucleus on some frame is an inflationary, idempotent, and binary meat preserving endofunction. And the Scott continuity of a nucleus is the usual notion. And we define frame, uh, the, we define uh, the patch of some frame L as the frame formed by Scott continuous nuclei on the frame. Um, and as this is a restriction of the set of nuclei on the frame, it's naturally defined as a subframe of the frame of all nuclei on the frame. And nuclei are ordered pointwise in this frame. And this was previously used by Escardo to give a constructive but impredicative treatment of the patch frame. 
So when we try to do this in, in, in type theory, we run into the problem that the frame of all nuclei doesn't seem to be possible to define in a, in a predicative context. So what do we do about this? We, we construct the subframe consisting of the Scott continuous nuclei directly, and we restrict attention to large and locally small frames with, with small bases. And the question of whether, whether this construction would be, would be possible in this special case was asked by Terry Kokan, and our contribution is that we answer this question in the positive by constructing the frame of Scott continuous nuclei. And this question turns out to be non-trivial, so a lot of definitions need to be um, reformulated, and I will, um, I will talk a bit about this. So I talked about locales with bases, so let me define this notion. So we say that some family of uh, basic opens, bi for i in i, forms a basis for, for some local x. If any open of the local can be expressed as a join of basic opens given by the family. Um, and as I said, we restrict attention to frames of the form u plus uu that have small bases. So categorically, one would say large and locally small frames with small bases if we view the frame as a category. Uh, so recall, recall the impredicative definition of a spectral locale I gave as one in which the compact opens form a basis closed under finite meets. So if we try to write this down in a predicative setting, how, how would we know that the joins of covering families existed? Uh, well, we wouldn't because they might not exist in general. Um, so we need to make sure that these, these joins are, are small and they can be defined. So we, we use the following definition of spectrality. We say, Given some local X with a basis, it, it's spectral if everything in the basis is compact and the basis is closed under, under finite meets. And we use exactly the same idea for stones, for bases consisting of clopens. Um, so to prove the universal property of patch that I mentioned, that it is the core reflector we want, we use the notions of closed and open nuclei. So given some local X, we embed the opens of X into its patch uh, by using these closed and open nuclei. And the closed nucleus of some open U is the nucleus mapping some open V to U join V, and the open nucleus is the one mapping some V to U implies V. But what is this, this implication here? It's heighting implication, but which is easy to define in an impredic impredicative context. But in, in type theory, we can't even write this thing down, which is supposed to be a basic building block of what we're trying to do, because, I mean, the, the adjoint functor theorem takes a very a join of very big things, and we don't know if this, this join exists. So just to be able to write this down, we had to go into a d detour into the, height, uh, the adjoint functor theorem, a version of the adjoint functor theorem for locally small frames with small bases, and um, so that we would define this as a right adjoint. And this, uh, this has been formalized as part of Escardo's type, topo type topology development, but um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. So uh, before, we, be, before we prove the universal property of patch, uh, we need to prove that it is stone as, as, um, as desired. And we do that as follows. We start with some, some local X with a small basis. And then for the patch of the locale, we take this basis that consists of the closed nucleus, closed nucleus of BK, open nucleus of BL for every basic opens BK and BL in the basis. And this is, as I said, patch is a topology of positive and negative information. And this is, this is exactly where the, the negative information comes from. We construct this, um, this basis consisting of, um, of the closed and the open nucleus. And the, um, the, the novelty here is that we need to make sure everything goes through the basis. I mean, everything works in this context where everything has been defined using, using a small basis and everything remains uh, large and locally small as, as we do things. So the summary is that we wanted to implement a rad rather important construction of point-free topology and doing this turned out to involve surprising challenges, and we had to reform, reformulate a few things in the theory itself to obtain a type theoretic understanding of the construction in consideration. And uh, almost, all of our, of, uh, almost all of our work has been formalized, actually almost twice, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a long story. <laughs>
And uh, yeah, that's it from me. Thanks. Thank you. Questions? Oh, the, the, the long story. Well, uh, we, we first started doing this in Cubicle Agda. Um, but then the, the f philosophy of the type topology development is a, um, is a bit different. I mean, we, we want to keep track of everything, um, e like everything we're using. For example, are we using full valence or are we using just propositional and func functional extensionality and so on? So every module in type topology is parameterized by, for example, is parameterized by functional extensionality if it is using functional extensionality. So we can um, see explicitly you know, how much extensionality we, we're using. So that has been one thing. And um, a, lot of, a lot of things had to change as we were constructing, like doing this construction. So at some point, it was easier to just get rid of the old formalization and start a new one. So thanks. Uh, so you seem to work in the context of homotopy type theory, oh, but yeah. uh, from your slides, I got the impression that you didn't need to truncate anything like working with H sets. Uh, ye yes. So, uh, um, do you, are you talking about the definition of frame, or yes, or, or in, in general? So, uh, well, in general. Yes. Yeah, so, guess. actually, everything is truncated, but it's just uh, I, I I haven't shown formal notation. But we, uh, may, maybe I should have been explicit about that. So wh whenever we say there exists, we mean something that is propositional, so something that is truncated. So um, we, we, we never say there exists or there is for things that are. OK, but for existence, it's fine. But uh, my question is more like, uh, in the particular definition of frames, then do you need to truncate uh, the types to get uh, H sets or not really? No, uh, actually, let me go back to that slide. So here, there's a, there's a kind of a footnote. It, it, it actually follows from the existence of a partial order. So it doesn't have to be <coughs> required to be a set because it is a set automatically just because there's a partial order on it. Yeah. And this is actually a result that holds for any univalent category because a partial order is just a special case of a univalent category. I mean, any uni the, the carrier set of any uni univalent category is an H set yeah. automatically. So that's... Okay. Uh, that's a result I wasn't aware of when I first started working on this, actually. So. Um, yeah, so a follow-up question regarding the previous mm -hmm. question. Um, yeah, because a lot of time also, let's say, if you want to define a frame, then you just leave out the partial order because you, uh, because you can just recover it from uh, the join or the meet. So if you would like remove mm -hmm. that, would you then explicitly have to require a type being a set? Uh, so so what, can, can you repeat the last part? If, if I yeah, so uh, in essence, you can always remove the, the partial order. Yeah. But if you would do that, would you then explicitly have to require that your uh, online type should be an H set or not? Right, so that's, um, that's a good question. I mean. If, if we were to take out the, the partial order and define the partial order x less than y as x is equal to the meet of x and y, then it would automatically fall in universe u, I guess. So it would, it would fall in the same the, the universe in which the carry set lives. And uh, why, why have we chosen to do this? Um, yeah, I'm may, may, maybe that's. Uh, uh, to, to, to be honest, uh, we, this is something we haven't used, and I don't know if something would go wrong if we tried that. <laughs> but uh, we, we experimented with this at some point, and this, I mean, the, the, this generality of three universes seemed to work better for our, for our purposes, but that's, that's something maybe we should try and you know, um, compare it to the current approach. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, let me let's, uh, thank the speaker again.